Luis Ortiz was dominant on Wednesday, and the Pirates got a little bit of deja vu against the Cincinnati Reds. You are Locked On Pirates, your daily Pittsburgh Pirates podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome back to the Locked On Pirates podcast, everybody here on the Locked On Podcast Network, where it is your team, your Pittsburgh Pirates every single day. My name is Ethan Smith, bringing you your news, analysis, opinions, and reactions to everything going on in the world of the Pittsburgh Pirates here on the Locked On Podcast Network, where it is your team, your Pittsburgh Pirates all the time. Sorry about yesterday. I wasn't feeling that well, but I am feeling very good today as the Pittsburgh Pirates defeat the Cincinnati Reds 6-1 to one on Wednesday to clinch another series win over their rivals from Ohio. We're going to discuss that as well as Luis Ortiz. We're also going to talk about this offense and some of those guys that were pretty cold for a minute, kind of heating back up. A guy who's already heated up in Brian Reynolds and what his offensive carrying is really doing for this team. And some early trade deadline thoughts and what I think the Pirates should do when trade deadline season comes around, which isn't all that far. And right now, the Pittsburgh Pirates got a massive victory over the Cincinnati Reds on Wednesday. As mentioned, they won this one 6-1 to one over the Cincinnati Reds. Really spearheaded, and I mean really spearheaded, by the phenomenal work of Luis Ortiz, who I spoke about in a piece on Steel City Pirates this past Friday as being a guy that is going to help this team by leaps and bounds, and I mean it in a lot of different ways. One, he's been very solid in that role that they've given him in the bullpen where Majinski would come out and start for him for about an inning or two, and then Ortiz would be kind of that long guy. Even in some of the other times that we've seen Luis Ortiz kind of come into games, he's been very, very good. They gave him the ball to start today as kind of a reward of that, I think, of how good he's truthfully been so far this season, and he impressed and some. He goes six innings, getting a quality start for the Pittsburgh Pirates today. One earned run, seven strikeouts, only allowed four hits on the afternoon against the Reds lineup that we already saw in the first two games. Can heat up at times. It is an offense that struggles a lot, much like the Pirates, but it is an offense that can heat up at a lot of different times. You saw Ellie De La Cruz and Jonathan India, as well as Spencer Steer, have very big series in this one. Luis Ortiz, meanwhile, did a very good job shutting those guys down today. Jonathan India, two for four, but Spencer Steer and Ellie De La Cruz were 0 for four each with two strikeouts each. The other hits, of course, coming from Nick Martini and Stuart Fairchild. So just a phenomenal job from Luis Ortiz in this one. You could not have asked for a better outing from Luis Ortiz. And as I mentioned, he's looked impressive all season. He's appeared in 22 games now, 3-2-3 ERA over 53 innings pitched, 43 strikeouts, the e or the whip at a 1.23. But you look at his last 15 games right now, folks, he is 3-0-2 ERA in his last 15 games, 41 innings pitched, 1-2-5 whip. But what's been very impressive, I think, that we've seen from Luis Ortiz this season as far as what he struggled with last season is the fact that you're kind of seeing those walks go away and you're starting to see the strikeouts come back. You mentioned the strikeout number earlier, 43 on the season. He's only walked 18 in his past 15, 36 strikeouts, 10 walks in his past seven, 23 strikeouts, four walks. So you're really starting to see Luis Ortiz get kind of back to the guy that we expected him to be when he came up in 2022, when he was having that phenomenal season going through the minors and he was just throwing the fastball with precision. He was throwing everything with precision. The command was there. And then in 2023, it just got lost. And we don't, nobody really knew what happened as to why he suddenly lost his command and his ability to really strike anybody out. But with every single outing that he has now, it really does seem that Luis Ortiz is starting to kind of make that comeback as a strikeout first pitcher and kind of learning 
how to get things done. As far as pitching is concerned as well, I don't want him to be the only guy really here in the spotlight, even though he was the big story in this game. Kyle Nicholas, who has been quietly under the radar, been very, very good as of late, pitches two scoreless innings with one walk and one strikeout. And then Araldis Chapman, who on Monday we spoke about with Gary, is probably being the closer while um, David Bednar is sidelined on the I.L., gets two strikeouts in his one inning of work, and the Pirates wrapped up the day with 10 strikeouts and just one walk the entire day from three pitchers. A big thing for this team when they've been taxing their bullpen a lot. The bullpen has been getting a lot of work. Today was a great day for this team. They needed this very badly, and this was a massive series win. It was because now you're two games clear of the Cincinnati Reds, who are now 37 and 43. You're 39 and 41 with a series this weekend against the Atlanta Braves on deck, a team the Pirates have already beaten this season. Now, without their two best players and Spencer or uh, Spencer Spencer Strider and Ronald Acuna, so now you go into that series, and once again, you kind of have some momentum going into this, much like you did the last time after you left the series beating the Cincinnati Reds, they lost to the Tampa Bay Rays. So you hope that some of this momentum that they carry over, especially winning in Cincinnati, can kind of carry over into this series against Atlanta. And a lot of that, I think, is going to be the pitching again. You look at what the pitching is going to look like in this upcoming series. It's all to be determined right now, but you can assume that Skeens and Jones are probably going to go, seeing as neither of them pitched in this series against Cincinnati. So you'll expect that. And at any time now, we're really expecting Martin Perez to come back. And if he comes back, especially with the way Luis Ortiz is playing, I think it's going to be interesting how they handle Luis Ortiz. They could shift him back into that long relief role or really just a relief role again, or use him as a guy for when Paul Skeens and Jared Jones maybe need that extra day off so that they can carry through the season and be available in August or September when we hope that the Pirates are still a competitive baseball team. That's what you really hope Luis Ortiz can be. And you also hope that Martin Perez can come back and be better than he was going into the injury. He was a lot very good and a lot better at the beginning of the season than he was right before the injury. So. Has Luis Ortiz earned an opportunity to be in this rotation? Sure, I think he has. But now with Perez coming back, maybe a Marco Gonzalez coming back, hopefully a Quinn Priester coming back at some point, the Pirates are going to run into a very good problem of having a lot of pitching available at their disposal. And that's something that I think is a problem that any team really in baseball would take as an issue or take as a very good problem to have is, oh man, who do I start today? Who do I throw in there? And that's a very good problem to have. And Luis Ortiz, folks, has become very instrumental into the success that we've seen now from this Pirates team over the past couple of weeks, winning series. Obviously, they lose the series to the Tampa Bay <coughs> Tampa Bay Rays. Excuse me. But big series win against the Cincinnati Reds. Big victory in general against the Cincinnati Reds on Wednesday. And it wasn't just Luis Ortiz who found some success. The offense found some success in this series against Cincinnati, having double-digit hits in all three games, even despite the loss on Monday. And it was thanks to a certain guy who's been carrying the offense, but also getting contributions from elsewhere. We're going to discuss that in just a moment. Folks, we all love our car, and we need to take care of it. That's why you need to go to eBay Motors, because they have millions of parts for your MVP, and you can win every time with parts that fit your ride, because passion, drive, and patience are the formula for winning championships and also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything. You need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. And with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, 
not cash. And with all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit is only available to U.S. customers. Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn Sales Navigator. Try LinkedIn Sales Navigator and get a 60-day free trial at linkedin.com slash locked on because are you struggling to close deals? Well, I want to tell you about the LinkedIn Sales Navigator. It's a sales intelligence platform that helps professionals effectively prospect and engage high-value customers, drive higher revenue, and increase sales performance. It also helps you target the right buyers, surface key signals, and show you hidden allies so you can find those buyers that are most likely to convert. Fueled by LinkedIn's 1 billion member platform, Sales Navigator gives you the most up-to-date first-party data, enabling you to unlock conversations with the people that matter. Right now, you could try LinkedIn Sales Navigator and get a 60-day free trial at linkedin.com slash locked on. That is linkedin.com slash locked on for a 60-day free trial. And let LinkedIn Sales Navigator help you sell like a superstar today. And folks, welcome back to the Locked On Pirates podcast here on the Locked On Podcast Network, where it is your team, your Pittsburgh Pirates, every single day. Make sure you also check out the Locked On Sports Today podcast. I was on there on Monday. And also check out the 24-7 streaming channel of Locked On, Locked On Sports Today. It's available to you on YouTube, where you found this, and Amazon Fire TV, bringing you news every single day in the sports world from the local host of Locked On. You can also listen to Pirates games on Sirius XM on the go, so make sure that you never miss a moment of the Bucko action. And this series had a lot of action. The Pirates, uh, ironically, in this series, folks, managed to have exactly 10 hits in all three games. So they had 30 hits in this series against the Cincinnati Reds at Great American Ballpark, or as I like to call it, Great American Small Park, because every fly ball in that stadium gives me anxiety. But what was not giving me anxiety, even despite the series or the first loss in the series, which was just a game that you don't see very often from the Pirates, where the offense really wasn't the issue. It was the starting pitching that they got from Bailey Falter in that game. But the offense looked good throughout this entire series. And I even want to go back to Monday, seeing as I didn't talk about that game on Tuesday as I wasn't feeling well. Even in that game, Brian Reynolds, who today has just continued to carry this offense, 23-game hit streak right now, is one of the hottest bats, if not the hottest bat in all of baseball. He has done phenomenal things and continues to just look like a menace at the plate, even to the point where Hunter Green puked after throwing a pitch to him, which I hope Hunter Green is okay as well. And I heard that apparently the Reds have brought up before that he's overhydrated. Uh, I drink a lot of water every day. I probably drink about 10 glasses of water every single day. So I guess I'm overhydrated. But you go back to that Monday game, and again, despite the loss, O'Neill Cruz had a great day. One up to Ellie De La Cruz, who had a ball that went to the freaking riverboat. And then O'Neill Cruz said, okay, hold my beer, and hit one almost 460 feet. Had a two for five day, three RBIs. Then you go to yesterday's game where they win 9-5, to five, just got off to a phenomenal start against Hunter Green. And this is a guy that the Pirates have really struggled against throughout his career. Now, albeit Hunter Green's career is still very short, but every time that the Pirates have faced him, they've seemed to have struggles. Even going back to last week, you saw the Pirates have struggles against Hunter Green. They didn't in that game. I mean, Hunter Green only went four innings, six earned runs, and five Ks. And a lot of that was, again, a large part to Brian Reynolds. Even Rowdy Telez, folks, has just continued to have a very strong run of things in June. And I know he was kind of the butt of every joke in April and May, but Rowdy Telez and his contributions are really starting to matter now, too, because this team desperately needs left-handed power. And we saw that from Rowdy Telez in this series. You saw that from O'Neill Cruz in this series. And even Jack Sawinski even had some big moments in this series as well. And as I try to tell everybody, Nick Gonzalez 
was eventually going to come back and have a strong series. He was eventually going to come back up. He was getting very unlucky over the past couple of weeks since that hot start that he had coming up on May 10th. He was three for four in Wednesday's game. His average now up to a 282, I believe, right now on the season. And it's nice to see these, th or 281, sorry, but he had another hit today and a scored run. And you come up to today's game now. Andrew McCutcheon has been one of the best leadoff hitters in the National League. Big game from him today, two RBIs on a one-for-five day. Brian Reynolds was one-for-five with two strikeouts. He kept the win streak going, not the game that we're accustomed to as of late from Brian Reynolds. O'Neill Cruz was 0-for-4. Rowdy Telez was 2-for-4 with a home run. Nick Gonzalez was 1-for-4. Connor Joe, who we've really wanted to come back and be a strong player because he was arguably – the most consistent Pirates player to begin the season, had a two-for-three day, average back up to 245, OPS at 727. Jason DeLay, which we're going to talk about here in a minute, had a two-for-three day with two RBIs. Folks, Jason DeLay, with all the issues the Pirates have had catching right now, has only received 15 at-bats so far this season. Now, He's dealt with injuries. He's been a guy that's been on and off the IL. I get that. Now, Jason DeLay, in those 15 at-bats, has a 733 OPS, albeit a 200 average, with a 6 RBI number. He has batted in 6 runs in 15 at-bats. And with all the issues that the Pittsburgh Pirates are having catching-wise, with Henry Davis being on the I.L. with a concussion, with Joey Bart being on the I.L., with Yasmani Grandal having his struggles. Why are you not starting Jason DeLay more often than not right now? Jason DeLay is a guy that, even going back to last season, has proven he can be a very valuable catching option for you when he is needed. And right now, what better time to be needed? I mean, I couldn't name a better time for him to be needed than right now because the catching position has just been a mess. And you that, that'll that lead into something that we'll talk about when I talk about my early trade deadline thoughts. But I see no reason why this guy shouldn't be starting every day. He should be. Now, don't get me wrong. Grandal should still start at some points. You can find a very healthy balance between those two players. But right now, with the way Yasmani Grandal has played and what Jason DeLay has done in a very small sample size, he should be starting. He should be the starting catcher. But what was big about this series? Now, I don't know if this is going to translate to Atlanta. We all know that Great American uh, Ballpark is a ballpark that is notoriously hitter-friendly. It was a series that I mentioned on Monday that should be a get-right series for this offense, and it was. They got 30 hits over the last three days. You want to see it carry over, though. You need guys like Nick Gonzalez to continue to produce. You need O'Neal Cruz to continue to produce. You want Connor Joe to kind of come back up a little bit. Even Key Brian Hayes, you're hoping he can get out of this offensive funk that he's been in. Uh, Rowdy Telez. Keep getting the contributions while you can. If Brian Reynolds can keep this hit streak going and keep being as hot as ever, the offense is going to follow suit. And as I mentioned earlier, Andrew McCutcheon has been one of the best leadoff hitters in all of the National League this season, really only trailing Arias and Kyle Schwarber in major statistics as far as hitting is concerned for leadoff hitters. So if you could keep getting these contributions, and you get pitching like you got today from Luis Ortiz, and you're likely going to continue to get pitching like you got today from Luis Ortiz because you've been getting it from Paul Skeens. You've been getting it from Nick, or, um, Mitch Keller. You've been getting it from Jared Jones. It's going to start leading to wins. It's going to start leading to series victories. And the month of June has been very kind to this team. Obviously, you have the series loss to Tampa Bay. You have the series loss to St. Louis. Those stunk. But everything else has been relatively good. You would hope that they could eventually get to a sweep or at least get to 500 before the trade deadline comes or before the all-star break comes because that's what we're going to all be talking about in July as well as the MLB draft. We're going to be talking about this stuff a lot come July. And I'm going to share some of my early trade deadline thoughts, what the Pirates should be after, and how I think they're going to handle 
the trade deadline that is going to be a very interesting one going into this trade deadline season. We'll discuss in just a minute. Today's episode is brought to you by Tax Network USA. Visit tnusa.com slash locked on today because here at Locked On Pirates, we pride ourselves on getting you the latest news for your team, whether it's the offseason, the draft, spring training, or the playoffs. It's year round. And you know what else is year round? Collection season. Just because tax season is over doesn't mean the IRS will stop coming after you for unfiled taxes. The IRS can garner your wages, levy your bank accounts, and even seize your property. Don't let the IRS target you. Let the licensed professionals and tax experts at Tax Network USA go to bat for you. With over 14 years of experience and an A-plus rating by the Better Business Bureau, Tax Network USA has saved their clients over $1 billion in tax debt. So whether you owe taxes, have complicated matters that require tax planning, or finally hit that parlay this season and need help correctly filing, call 1-800-549-1000 or visit taxnetworkusa.com slash locked on. Today's episode is also brought to you by Prize Picks. Download the Prize Picks app today and use code Locked On MLB for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars because you can now win up to one hundred times your money on Prize Picks with as little as four correct picks. You could turn ten dollars into one thousand dollars. With the finals over, the hoops action doesn't stop. On prize picks, women's basketball is still heating up with stars like Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese looking to make names for themselves alongside greats like Brianna Stewart and Asia Wilson. You can win up to 100 times your cash watching them ball out. And prize picks is available in more than 30 states across the country, including California, Texas, and Georgia. So download the prize picks app today. And use code Locked On MLB for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars. That's code Locked On MLB on Prize Picks for a deposit match up to one hundred dollars. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy with Prize Picks. And welcome back, everybody, to the final part of today's episode of Locked On Pirates, where your host is getting a little jiggy with it today, having a nice little dance party because the Pittsburgh Pirates won another series against the Cincinnati Reds at Great American Ballpark, and they are 39-41. and 41. There are some games still going on today. Currently, while I'm recording, the Braves are leading the Cardinals 4-2. to two. Uh, As far as things are concerned, the Rangers are tied with the Brewers 5-5, five to five, and that's really it is right uh, for right now. A lot of games will be on probably when you're listening to the show later tonight or um, tomorrow. Uh, I'm sure we'll have the Locked On Reds guys on tomorrow, so that'll be a fun little thing that you can look forward to. But as we look at things right now, the Pirates are 6-4 and four in their last 10 games. They are two games out of the final wild card spot, only behind the Mets, Kershaw Grimace, the Diamondbacks, who of course made the World Series last year, and the San Diego Padres, who already made a big trade earlier this season, getting Luis Arise from the Miami Marlins. They also trail the Milwaukee Brewers by eight games, the St. Louis Cardinals by two and a half, and they have a two-game advantage on the Chicago Cubs and the Cincinnati Reds. With all that said, there is still a lot of baseball left, but it is one of the more important times of the MLB season that we are about to approach. It's June 26th. That means the MLB draft is on around the corner. We'll be talking about that next month. But more importantly, the All-Star break is almost here, which means trades are going to heat up just like the weather outside. And that's been a big talking point among everyone is what are the Pirates going to do at the trade deadline? What's there to be their plan? What player are they going to get? Are they going to go get Luis Robert? Are they going to go get Vladdy? Are they going to go get Pete Alonzo? Are they going to get Jazz Chisholm? Are they going to get Tanner Scott? Are they going to get Garrett Crochet? Folks, nobody really knows. All I can do for you in this final part of today's episode of Locked on Pirates is give you kind of an idea of what I think they'll do. I don't have credentials. I don't have it inside to the team or anything like that. I don't think they're going to make that super splash move that everybody expects them to make. You know what I mean? 
this is a team that is built to have success. They have Skeens, they have Jones, they have Keller. Falter has had his ups and downs. But now you have Luis Ortiz who's uh, producing. You're getting Martin Perez back at some point. You're hopefully getting back Quinn Priester and Marco Gonzalez at some point. Ryan Barucki will be back at some point. So health is a big part of this too. But when you look around the roster, it's not all that hard to find where the Pirates need to have success and where they need to kind of improve. Right now, Brian Reynolds is really the only outfielder that's producing. Michael A. Taylor has fallen off a cliff. Jack Sawinski has too many cold spells to really amount to anything as far as even when he's doing things right. Edward Olivares has looked good as of late. He had a good series in the Cincinnati Red Series. But other than that, you're not really getting a lot. I would like the Pirates to go out and find a way to get an impact outfielder. Be that, I'll throw out some names, Brent Rooker. Be that J.J. Bladé. Be that Luis Robert Jr. if you want to tickle your fancy a little bit with that. Be that Jazz Chisholm if you want. They need to get an impact outfielder. First base as well. As I mentioned earlier, Connor Joe is not the same Connor Joe we watched earlier in the year. Rowdy Telez, for everything he's doing great right now, is probably not going to sustain what he's doing in the month of June. You need an impact first baseman. The catching position, as I mentioned earlier, Jason DeLay, to me, is their best option at this current moment with Henry Davis on the IL and even when he is playing struggling. Yasmani Grandal having his moments and Joey Bart on the IL. Go get yourself an impact catcher if you can or even a guy that you could just trust back there. And then I would throw out one middle relief arm just to get through the innings that the season will bring and throw at you in the second half. But again, I think the biggest thing that I can continue to tell everybody about the Pirates and their trade deadline, don't expect them to make a move that you would say won the trade deadline. Let's go back to 2013. They got Marlon Bird, and nobody thought anything of it. And Marlon Bird ended up being a hero in the wild card series against the Cincinnati Reds, hitting the homer before Russell Martin did, eventually the one that everybody remembers with Johnny Cueto. They don't need a superstar on this team. They don't need to rip apart the farm to make this team better. Now, do they need to dip into the farm system to make this team better? Obviously. They have a lot of guys that would be, <laughs> excuse me, very valuable to a lot of other teams, especially rebuilding teams where they could get some value back and really go for this thing. And whether they like it or not, I think the Pirates are going to be in it come September anyway. So why not go for it? Why not try to make a difference? And why not try? to make this team better. Because at the end of the day, if it doesn't work out, at least you tried. That's all I can ask for. And that's all you should be asking for as well. Folks, thank you for tuning in to this late afternoon edition of Locked On Pirates here on the Locked On Podcast Network, where it is your team, your Pittsburgh Pirates every day. My name again is Ethan Smith. Follow me on Twitter at MVP underscore Ethan or at Locked On Pirates for all of your news, analysis, opinions, and reactions to everything going on in the world of the Pittsburgh Pirates. You can find the show on all of your audio platforms and on YouTube because it's free and available to you every Monday through Friday. Yins are the best fans that a podcast host could ask for. I'll see you tomorrow, but until then, see you on the flip side.